Okay, so anorexia is an eating disorder. One way to remember is three Fs and D F. We have female, 90% 90 of those who present with anorexia are female. Fat distortion, we saw from the lady looking at herself in the mirror that her perception of herself is different. And then the, the last F stands for feels fat and fears fat. Okay, so the D stands for disturbances in the way in which the person views their body. So even with when treating them, it's always very important to keep monitoring their BMI. Um, the person is in denial that their body weight is low. They believe that they are fat. It is a belief in their mind. E stands for energy intake restrictions in comparison to what the body actually requires. And then F stands for fear of gaining weight or becoming fat. So three Fs are D. Fs. So you can either use one of these mnemonics to remember. So there are a lot of things that happen um, with a patient who has anorexia. The electrolyte abnormalities is quite a huge um, problem because they have low potassium, low magnesium, low phosphate. They experience um, vitamin deficiencies like vitamin B1, thiamine. And then you see um, amenorrhea, like we mentioned before. So a woman that has already um, started her menses, the flow um, stops. And for um, those who are younger, there is um, their menses don't even start even after the age of uh, 15. Then they do experience bloating, uh, the GI symptoms, bloating, constipation, nausea, because the, um, the gastrointestinal tract, tract can't handle um, getting normal feed anymore. So when they eat something, they start feeling really bloated. And then because of the lack of intake of nutrients, we see it affecting them. They become anemic. They have low energy levels. They get easily bruised and their immunity also drops. Then um, they, it, can, it can become severe to the point that it affects even the brain and they can end up in the hospital. So when it comes to treating them, and you want to start with cognitive behavioral therapy as well, um, which is focused a focus type, which is the individual eating disorder focused cognitive behavioral therapy. And then there is the monthly anorexia nervosa treatment for adults. This is a specific type of therapy, which uses a combination of different uh, types of therapy. Then we have the specialist supportive um, clinical management um, for children and young people, there is the anorexia-focused family therapy. That is the first line of treatment for children and young people. Then we have cognitive behavioral therapy as the second line. So it's um, important when they are being treated to actually ensure that certain things are monitored because they can have what is called um, refeeding syndrome. And in refeeding syndrome, that is for those who um, it becomes very severe that they have to be hospitalized for, so they, they experience what is called refeeding syndrome where um, insulin gets secreted once uh, food enters into their body and it can lead to um, a sudden or increased intake. The cells begin to take in some of the electrolytes um, like potassium, magnesium, and um, phosphate, which leads to a drop in the levels of those um, of them in the blood, which can further complicate the issues that they're having and lead to cardiac arrhythmias and eventually lead to death. So it's very important to actually monitor the electrolyte levels and in terms of when feeding them, it's also quite important to take it stepwise and to ensure that they are monitored. So which one of the following parameters is not a feature of anorexia nervosa? 
Does anyone want to risk this as well? See, we just go to one level. Okay, thank you very much. So yes, that is the correct answer. So remember that growth hormone um, is increased in this case. You know that O stands for estrogen, FSH, LH, testosterone, and um, T3 thyroid. Um, so all those are actually low, but the opposite is uh, the growth hormone is elevated. So the last topic we're taking is alcohol. And what we want to know uh, about alcohol is the withdrawal aspect. Um, so in the first six to 12 hours of a patient that is withdrawing from alcohol, you begin to see the symptoms, um, which is... Um, Sorry, in the 30, by 36 hours, you see the peak incidence of seizures. So by 48 to 72 hours, you see a peak incidence of delirium tremors, which is um, you see cause tremors, you see delusions, you see confusions, hallucination, fever, and tachycardia. So... Um, in this case, you want to admit the patient into the hospital in order to monitor them and stabilize them. Your first line of treatment would be um, long-acting benzodiazepines. That's the first line. And I wanted to go back to actually show that by 36 hours, you see the peak incidence of seizures. So it's important. This first line is important. Then um, you have diazepam as well you have lorazepam which is used in um, cases of patients that are suffering from hepatic failure then you have carbamazepine as well for seizures it's important to note that um, phenytoin is not an option in this kind of situations because it has been noted to not be effective in treating doing it for for treatment in alcohol Thank you.